Over a month ago, Heretic Knives reached out. They asked me if I'd be willing to check out two of their premier knives and give my honest to God feedback, but not just my first impressions and initial reactions. They also wanted me to carry these knives a whole lot, use them, beat them up, and then do a follow-up video. Let's talk about the Heretic Knives Pariah and the Heretic Manticore S. Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you have been here before, make sure to Spartan kick that like button because we are on a journey to 100,000 subscribers. And the beginning of every journey starts with a single thumbs up from you. So if you could help me out, that would be greatly appreciated. I've had these knives in my possession now for a little over a month and thank you to Heretic Knives for reaching out and asking for my honest opinion. Now I have already done my initial reactions and first impressions of both of these knives and I will make sure to go ahead and link them up in the corner above. So if that's what you're looking for a normal video, uh, go ahead and check that out. I'm going to talk about specifically my use case scenarios, how I use these knives and what my thoughts are over a month later. Now that, you know, they don't look so shiny and brand new anymore because you could tell by the by the marring on the blade, which is not bad, but you could tell this knife has been through some materials. Now, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. I am not a hard use case kind of guy. My typical use case scenario includes primarily opening and cutting down down and disassembling cardboard. That is because I receive a lot of packages, and so that is, of course, my primary use case. I do, however, like to carry knives every day because I like to be prepared for the stuff that is out of the ordinary. Because if all I ever did was cut boxes, I would just, of course, use a utility blade. But but it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And these knives were often carried together. So aside from cutting plastic, aside from cutting cardboard and opening packages and going through tape and sitting in my pocket, it has been over a month now and I've really truly enjoyed carrying these. Something specifically that I enjoy about the Heretic Manticore S is the size. This is actually kind of what I would consider to be a unicorn size and that is because for my average sized hands, and that is to say that I wear a medium to large size men's glove, I can get a full four finger grip, something that you cannot do with one of its competitors, the UTX-70. At the same time, it is a little bit smaller than the UTX-85, which means that if you're in a state which regulates the length of your OTF knife, uh, this one might actually go ahead and be within those parameters all while making sure that you can actually still get a full grip. Primarily, this was carried in my fifth pocket, and I love a good fifth pocket carry when I can get a full four finger grip because I don't use my fifth pocket for anything else. It's free real estate, leaving the main pocket open for a big boy, something a little bit more serious, something that's going to be a little confidence inspiring. And that is, of course, the Heretic Pariah. Now, both of these knives, in case you didn't know, are 100% made right here in the US of A. They both feature aluminum milled chassis and Magna Cut Cerakoted blades, which I'm a huge fan of Magna Cut, guys. If you haven't seen my Steel Snobs video on Magna Cut, Magna Cut is kind of a unicorn steel because it pairs really good edge retention with extremely good toughness and legendary levels of corrosion resistance, meaning that you can take this bad boy everywhere. You could wear all the Cerakote finish off of that blade and it's still going to be very, very much resistant to the rust. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Rochambeau, look at the blade geometry. Look at how thick that spine is. How are you going to do any kind of utility cutting? Well, if I didn't give it away at the beginning of the video showing me going through cardboard like it was nothing, check out the edge geometry. So this has a nice wide 
edge bevel. And that's not to say that it's thick behind the edge, even though it is thicker than, you know, what you're going to get out of a Spyderco Par Paramilitary 2 or, you know, a TRM Atom. Uh, this is a serious knife. So, yes, it does have a little thicker geometry, but that edge bevel is wide, which means that getting into the cut is not an issue. I also use this knife specifically to cut down some three quarter inch rubberized floor mats in my wife's car because we recently bought her one. And you know what I'm talking about. If you ever bought a used car and it didn't come with the floor mats, well, we got some generic floor mats, but the thing is, is those, those are ones that you have to cut down to fit regardless. And so I used this not because I thought it was the best tool for the job, but because it was in my pocket. And have you ever heard the saying that the best knife to have is the one that you're carrying? Well, that was the case for this one. And it went through those three quarter inch rubberized floor mats without issue. I did not have a problem. In fact, I did the cardboard cut test to show that while it might not be the sliciest edge geometry, it is definitely good enough to get the job done, but also leave you feeling confident enough that if you need to put this bad boy through a car door, you probably could. Something else that makes this knife very enjoyable to carry is this pocket clip. How many of you guys watching right now look down at your jeans pocket and let me know how frayed, how worn is the lip of that jeans pocket? The beauty of this ball bearing pocket clip is, is that it's not going to tear up your pockets. You know, it'll, it'll spare your pockets for another day. They last one more wash cycle. You're good to go. But furthermore, this pocket clip is a redesign from the Heretic Knives previous pocket clip, and it's great. They did phenomenal. They didn't go for anything too crazy. And the result is that it looks good. But it also functions well and it disappears in the hand when you're holding the knife. What more could you ask for from a pocket clip? Like that's what I'm talking about. That's why I like 3D milled pocket clips. I'm not even mad at the positioning, even though typically I do like to see it centered there. Um, but in this case, it disappears in the hand. You don't feel it. It goes in and out of the pocket with ease, and it looks all right, too. The ball bearing pocket clip was initially designed by the legendary knife maker and designer Todd Begg, and of course, that design has been adapted some successfully, some unsuccessfully over time by different companies. Heretic Knives definitely did it some honor on this one because I'm really enjoying it. Next, I want to talk about the action. So I'm not a gigantic fan of automatic knives, typically because manual knives have come a long ways with the advent of, you know, bearings and, and just companies figuring it out. Anytime you're relying on a spring, that's another item that could break. But by the way, if your spring does break, you could 100% reach out to Heretic Knives and they would replace it for you because it has a lifetime warranty. And that's something that I like to call good service. I really like this knife. One of the things that I really like is the fact that it looks really badass. And that cannot be understated because it's a harpoon style drop point blade. You might think, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it's been a proven fact that psychologically speaking, when you enjoy the way something looks, chances are you're going to gravitate towards it. If it's a tool, you're, that means that you're going to use it more. There's nothing more useless than a knife that sits in a drawer and never gets carried. And this one is definitely not in danger of that happening anytime soon. I've talked ad nauseum about the Pariah. Let's talk about the Heretic Manticore S. What a cool little EDC knife. And I say EDC because of its size. Be fitting in the fifth pocket, it disappears, and it's nice. It feels good in the hand. The action is good. And it's not hard to deploy this at all because of where they actually have the milling on these handle scales. So, for example, you push out with your thumb and you can pull in with your index finger. And it's very easy, very easy, not difficult at all. I handed this to my wife. She was able to do it. And that's generally a pretty good litmus test. You know, if you can hand this to someone that does not handle OTF knives that often and they don't have any issues with the switch, there's your sign. It's a good design. And while we're on this side, let's talk about this pocket clip because this is also a redesign from a previous pocket clip. It's a departure from the old school heretic clips. And I gotta say, they, they're they two for two on new pocket clips in my book. This is definitely a win. It carries well. It doesn't have a ball bearing, but it also doesn't tear up the pocket. That The nature of 3D milled pocket clips are that they feel good ergonomically, and that is to say that they disappear, but also they go in and out of the pocket without too much issue. You. There's no harsh edges there, and it has some really comfortable ergonomics. Of course, frag pattern milling doesn't hurt either. Now, 
the elephant in the room, neither of these knives are cheap. You're looking at about 285 on this one, and I want to say high threes, low fours uh, for this one. But when we're talking American-made automatic knives with premium steel like Magna Cut and really well-tuned action, that's kind of the ballpark that you're going to be in. This is going to be competing with the Microtex of the world, and honestly, I think that they do a really good job. Heretic is coming out with new stuff. Uh, they've come out with multiple new models here in the last month or so. I've seen a camo carbon fiber manual version of this knife, which I really want to check out. Um, and of course, I've also seen a new OTF from them called the Nyx, which looks pretty sweet as well. And for those lucky dogs who are going to be at Blade Show Atlanta later, you'll probably have a chance to see those firsthand. But I really enjoy these knives, but I'm curious. Have you checked these out? Do you own one? Do you own both? Are you planning on potentially picking one or both of these up? If not, why not? Let's have that discussion in the comment section down below. And by the way, if you want to watch more awesome knife and EDC content, go ahead and click on one of the videos that pops up next. Mm -hmm.